Welcome back to Dano Does Things. My name is Dano and thank you so much for coming to hang out with me here today. I don't know if it's just my algorithm, but I've been seeing a ton of embroidered necklaces and pendants all over Instagram and Pinterest. And of course, being the crafty person I am, I wanted to give it a try. I was Googling like mini embroidery hoop or embroidered pendant and all I was getting was finished objects or these hoops that didn't exactly match what I was seeing. Finally, I went to the jewelry section of a Michaels and I actually found what I was looking for. So I discovered what I was actually looking for is called a bezel. They come in all shapes and sizes, but I got these larger circular ones. Now that you have the terminology to know what you're looking for, I can show you how to make these necklaces. I'll give you a few examples of some things you can put in your necklace. And of course, I'll show you how to put them all together. So let's get crafting. Here is what you'll need for this project. Bezels, fabric or felt, thin cardboard, embroidery floss, an embroidery needle, glue, scissors, and some binder clips. There are a few alternatives, but we'll get there. Alright, as you can see the bezels have a flat solid back with a small edge all the way around them and we'll be attaching our embroidery piece to this. Start by taking a piece of thin cardboard, I recycled a Realty postcard, and cut out a piece slightly smaller than the inside of your bezel. You can also use this template to sketch out your designs. Now you can definitely stick with embroidery, but you can also branch out and use needle felting or felt applique and really make the piece your own. I'll set aside these two and show you how to assemble this on this little leaf applique piece. First we need to thread a needle with some embroidery floss. If you're not doing a tutorial on YouTube, you can choose the color that matches your background, though it'll be on the back so it actually doesn't really matter. Anyways, thread and knot the end of your floss. Now put your cardboard template on the back of your piece in the center and keep this facing up. Start by bringing your needle through from the back to the front and pull through. Oh, hey, there's the center of the frame. Then go directly across the circle and bring your needle from the front to the back and pull through. You want to pull tight enough to bring the fabric around, but not so tight that you bend the cardboard. Next, come across to just to the right of your first stitch and again go from the back to the front of the fabric. Then go directly across the circle, which should be just to the left of your second stitch, and this time take your needle from the front to the back of your fabric. Continue in this manner until you've gone around the whole circle, tightening as you go. Once you've created a nice little corset, leave yourself a little more thread than I did so you don't have to struggle to tie off the end of your embroidery floss. Snip off any long thread ends. Now I've got one of mine done, so I'll meet you back here when I finish the other two. Okay, they are all ready and it's time to attach your piece to your bezel. Obviously, the hardest part of this project for me is deciding which bezel to use with which piece. For this project, when it comes to glue, you have a couple of choices. If you are looking for a super permanent solution, then you can use the E6000 Craft Glue. But if you want the option to reuse your bezel, or you just don't like working with the more toxic glues, hot glue works great. When you want to switch out the design, just use a butter knife to carefully get under the edge of the bezel and pop it right out. Now cover the back of your piece with hot glue, trying to coat most of the back without making the glue too thick. Once it is covered, place your piece glue side down into your bezel, making sure to tuck around the edges if needed. Now to make sure the glue sets well, though it's more important if you're using the E6000, take your binder clips and clamp down your piece. Alternatively, place the whole thing under a heavy book or object. Now just wait for your glue to set while I finish the other two. Once the glue is set, remove the clips and thread your necklace on a chain of your choosing and you are done. These also make excellent keychains. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we will see you next week.